This is Make Noise Maths. Maths is one of the most popular Eurorack modules, but it's also one of the least well understood. Many people never explore much beyond using it as an envelope generator or an LFO, and that's a shame, because it can do a lot more than provide modulation or drive a VCA. In the last video, I spent some time exploring the end of rise and end of cycle outputs and how you can use them to munge and manipulate triggers. This time I'm going to go back to some of the more basic functions, like a cycling LFO and adding voltages together. But I'm going to use them for something more exciting, generating pitch CV for things like generative uh, sequencing, and manipulating pitch to add accent to notes. In this video I want to cover four different patches that manipulate and create pitch CV. I'm going to start with some sequencing ideas, but then I want to talk about making small changes to that CV for accents to specific notes. I've made some diagrams that show how to patch up the ideas we're going to go through. I know it can get a little confusing. One of the key things in modular synthesis is that it's all just voltage. Gates and triggers, control voltage for modulation, pitch CV for your oscillators, even the audio signal. It's all just voltage that rises and falls, and pretty much anything can be patched into anything else, though it may not give you the results you expect. So in these diagrams I'm showing gates and triggers, audio, and general CV in different colored lines to help with the understanding. If you find the diagrams helpful, I've made a PDF of them and it'll be linked in the description. For this video I'm going to be making constant use of a quantizer. If you're not yet familiar with a quantizer, the basic idea is that it snaps pitch CV to a specific musical scale. It takes in a continuous voltage and rounds it up or down to the notes that are just in that scale. I'm using the IntelliGel Scales Quantizer, which is great. It allows me to select individual notes, it responds to triggers in different ways, and I can quantize two signals at a time. But whichever quantizer you have will probably work fine. You can see here how it's taking a continuous variable voltage in green, and it's outputting a, just a few values in yellow. I'm going to come back to this right away. First up, arpeggios. An arpeggio is when you take a chord, and instead of playing the notes together, you split the chord up and play the notes individually. So for a C major chord, instead of playing the C, E, and G all at once, we're going to do them separately in a sequence. We're back to that ramping pitch in green, and you can see that the quantizer outputting in yellow is just showing three notes, that's the C, E, and the G. So as that continuous voltage comes in, the quantizer is snapping it to one of those three notes, and then we get a repeated arpeggio of C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E, G, the C major chord. One of the reasons I really like IntelliGel Scales is that you can pick the notes off of the little keyboard, and it lets you play along by changing the notes. Let's take a look at the patch. Channel 1 on Maths is acting as the clock, setting how long each note is on and the time between them. See the previous video about gates and triggers for more information. Turn on the cycling, and the clock will start to tick. And I'm using a clock divider here to set how many notes are in the arpeggio. I'm using the 3 division, and so every 3 steps, it's going to trigger channel 4. And channel 4 is going to do a single pass of its own rise and fall. And then it's going to output that pitch CV that the quantizer is going to grab and produce individual notes from. You don't have to use a clock divider, but it does add some interesting capabilities and makes it a little bit more predictable. Since the pitch is based off the incoming voltage, we can tweak what Maths is doing and change up the arpeggio. Slow it down, speed it up, change how fast it rises and falls. In this case, I've restricted the range Maths covers to only one volt, which is going to keep it within one octave, but that's easy to change on the attenuators as well. You may notice that sometimes a note doesn't play, and that's sort of a feature of scales. You can respond to triggers in different ways, and one of the ways you can set it is that if the outputting note doesn't change, then it doesn't trigger, and that can give you a neat effect. So this is a fun one, and a broad topic, and it deserves a video all its own. I think the term generative gets misused a lot, but I think a good description in general goes something like, Generative music is evolving, non-repetitive music created by a system. Each of those points is important. The music has to change and evolve, it shouldn't be repetitive, although it may repeat over time, and it needs to be created by some sort of intentional system. For this video, I'm just looking at the repeating but not repetitive aspect, and how to generate sequences like that, and the basic tool is going to be a 2LFO sequencer. The whole idea is based on adding two LFOs together. It's easier to show than to describe. So here we can see the output of two LFOs on the top, and at the bottom is the sum of the two. You can see that it still rises and falls, but less regularly, and sometimes you get occasional steep changes and plateaus. 
When you apply the quantizer to it, you end up with a set of related notes that sometimes repeat and sometimes don't. Sometimes they follow the scale up and down, and sometimes they don't. Of course, you're not restricted to just adding the LFOs together. Here I'm taking a clock divider that remains high for half of its cycle. I'm picking a cycle of 64 steps, and then I'm feeding it into channel 3. Every 64 steps, then, the clock divider will go high, and that voltage is added to the LFO, transposing the sequence up and down. Practically, you might want to change things less often. I picked 64 for purposes of the video, but in practice, I usually use something like the 256 division. One of the challenges that you really see is that you have to watch the levels, as it doesn't take much to have variation over four or five octaves, and you can spend a lot of time fiddling with the attenuator knobs. One solution to that is to use the other mass attenuator channel as a master range control. Instead of taking everything out of the sum straight to the sequencer, let's pass the sum back into channel two, and then we can use that attenuator to keep everything reasonable. Then take the channel two output and run that to the sequencer. If you turn the attenuator all the way down, your range goes down to just a couple of notes, or you can open it up for a wider range. Another technique I come back to is to use a sequencer like the depth for A155 here. It allows you to put input CV for individual steps that override whatever the knobs say. And so I'll take a repeating sequence that I like, and then I'll bring in different CV for two or three of the steps. So it almost repeats, but not quite. But this is a big topic, and we could spend a lot of time talking about things here that aren't mass related. So let's move on. One challenge with the sequencer is there's often no variation to the notes aside from the pitch. Mass can help us out here by adding accents to individual notes. We'll start with vibrato. Vibrato is the rapid warbling of pitch around a note. And in the context of pitch CV, that just means adding a little bit of LFO to it. There are a couple of challenges here. So far we've put the quantizer on the output from maths, but that wouldn't do any good here. The quantizer would just eliminate any of the tiny variations. So instead we have to take the output of the quantizer and run it into maths and add the variation, but without messing up that original pitch. Luckily, the inputs on channel 1 and 4 are effectively unity inputs when you crank the attenuverters all the way up. The second challenge is that the variation we're talking about here is tiny, tiny. You can dial it down on the attenuverter from that channel, but it usually isn't small enough. How do we reduce it further? Pass it from one attenuator into the other. This double attenuation gets us down to where we need to be. Depending on what you're going for, the one attenuator might be enough, but I found that I need to use both to get it dialed in. So I'm going to use the A155 here again, because it lets me pick a couple of specific steps, and it'll output a gate during them. And we're going to use that gate to turn the cycling for the vibrato on and off. You can also change up the rise and fall times, or the attenuator to get different effects. And if you wanted to, you could CV control it by adding some control voltage to the rise and fall. One neat feature that the Mordax data has is a spectrograph, which shows you the frequency breakdown of the output. You can see here that the different pitches are at different heights, and then if you watch when the vibrato sounds, you can see that the line grows thicker, indicating that broader range of frequencies at that point. Here's another accent to give the oscillator a bit of character. Portamento is when one note slides into the other. It's pretty similar to vibrato in the sense that we're bringing in an external pitch CV, turning up that channel to get it to unity, and then adding something to it. But instead of adding a whole other LFO, we're just going to use the rise and fall slew controls to slow down that transition between pitches. 
But just like with vibrato, this bit of musical seasoning needs to be used with some restraint. To control it, we're going to use some CV on the both input. We're going to set the rise and fall to the maximum we want it to be, and then, and this is a little counterintuitive, but you send in a high voltage to turn off the portamento and a low voltage to activate it. It's weird, I know. Rise and fall CVs work one way, add a voltage to increase time, but the both CV works in reverse, adding voltage decreases the time. Go figure. Anyway, the depth for sequencer is going to help us out here again, because it can output two CVs per step. One's going to go to the quantizer and then to the oscillator as pitch. The other is going to go to the both CV input on channel one. The steps where that second voltage is turned all the way up are going to play without portamento. And then we're going to turn a couple of the steps down, and the portamento will slide between the notes. Now what's great is that the portamento and vibrato each just use one of the channels, so we can do them both at the same time and add all the voltages together. We could take the starting pitch, add in that tiny change of the vibrato when it runs, and then add in the slide of the portamento when it runs, and we can do it all at once. Mass ends up being our master accent controller for a sequence. So that wraps it up for this video. I hope you found it useful. Next time I want to do a deeper dive into SLU, the rise and fall CV controls, and voltage in general. Don't forget, if you found these diagrams useful, there's a PDF link in the description that you can download them from. Thanks for watching.